I'm here because of trauma. I'm standing here in front of you all today because my life has been an epic journey through trauma. It's kind of crazy because there's so many millions of us on this planet who have lived through and continue to live with trauma. I'm not singular in this, I'm not unique. I dare say I'm not even in the minority. But I have made an observation as someone who lives every day with the constant low grade and sometimes even debilitating symptoms of my own trauma. Most of us want nothing to do with trauma at all. Who would? Who would willingly want to speak about what tortures and terrorizes us at night? Who would welcome the uncomfortable and anxiety-producing experiences that come with trauma's terrain? Who would be excited to share their deepest wounds and darkest struggles? Painful, it's crippling. And it often comes with a layer of shame. Shame in not feeling capable of dealing with it on your own. Shame in not feeling like you have the power to make it go away. And shame at feeling shamed for having it at all. That's my story. That's how I've always felt. And trauma is a tricky thing. Because it's so painful, we don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And we work really hard to sweep it under the rug and pretend that we're okay, but it's always there, getting in the way of our daily lives and our interactions with others. Symptoms we experience might include anxiety, panic attacks, flashbacks, depression, struggles with addiction, overworking, hypervigilance, physical illness, self-harm, and even suicidal thoughts. Much as we try to forget about it, it lives out in our bodies and minds and spirits. And as much as we try to sweep it under the rug, it's always there expressing itself in a myriad of inconvenient ways whether we acknowledge it or not. But what if I told you there was a way to transform trauma into something beautiful? What if there was a safe space, a solid container to pour your trauma stories into? What if you could experience connection by sharing your stories with others and not feel so alone and isolated in your struggle? What if you could feel better? Let me tell you how I know. I'm the child of a gifted pianist and a highly decorated Vietnam veteran, a medevac pilot who ran dangerous rescue missions deep into the jungles of Southeast Asia to save his fellow wounded soldiers. And you might imagine how the extreme levels of PTSD my father returned home with led my parents to divorce when I was four. And within a year, my mother remarried and joined a religious cult. And the rest of my childhood and adolescence was a deadly cocktail of religious fanaticism, an abusive alcoholic step-parent, and a soul-crushing pressure to be someone I wasn't. However, around age nine, I discovered two lifelines, my gift for singing and the local community theater. And this was my escape from the terrors that I was living in. And in this arts community, I found acceptance. I found a budding self-confidence. And I learned more about life and living from the stories of musicals and plays, the songs that I was studying and the people that I was creating with than anything I learned at home. Unlike home, this was a safe space, a welcoming of all walks of life, a judgment-free zone, and a shared understanding of our humanity. So I went on to study music theater and classical voice at conservatory and began working as a professional singer-actor across the country. But before I graduated, however, I discovered yet another lifeline, teaching, and I was offered the opportunity to create an after-school arts program at a local elementary school, and I had never taught before, so I decided to use the one thing that I knew to be true about the arts as my guiding principle. How could I help these young people feel better about themselves through this experience, the way the arts had done for me? And so it began. I would go on to spend the next nearly 30 years driven to understand how to use the arts as a tool for human development, for healing, and for connection. I'd go on to design and develop and facilitate countless workshops, programs, curricula, staff developments, 
and motivational talks for hundreds of young people as well as for adults. But what I didn't know then, however, was that I was trying to help myself as much as I was trying to help them. So let me tell you what happened for me when it all fell apart. When my beautiful baby boy was born, my world turned upside down. I was suddenly hit with frequent panic attacks and an irrational fear of leaving him even for a few moments and a deep postpartum depression that caused me to isolate and withdraw from the world. And I had so desperately wanted to be a mom. And so after many miscarriages and finally receiving the gift of this beautiful child, I could not believe that my experience of motherhood was going so poorly. The trauma of my earlier life was suddenly triggering a cascade of debilitating symptoms by being a new mom. Could I keep my baby safe? Unlike the way my own mother had constantly put me in harm's way, could I shield him from the fanaticism and the abuse and the judgment that I grew up with? And it was like a bomb went off, and my trauma just wouldn't stay silent any longer. And I was in one of these break glass in case of emergency moments. So I went to the one thing that I knew had always helped me, music. Except this time around, in a light bulb moment, I realized that I could no longer escape into other people's stories by singing someone else's songs or playing a character in a musical. Only my own story could help me now. So I took up songwriting with a fury. And I see in hindsight now that that was yet another lifeline. And I was afraid at first. I was terrified of being crushed under the weight of digging up my painful past. But something amazing happened instead. I found that the structure of the music created a safe container for my overwhelm. I discovered that singing a certain group of notes in just a certain way that felt right, or transforming my anger into this driving rhythm, or finding that perfect rhyme to capture the depth of my pain, it softened the blow. The elements of sound, melody, rhythm, and rhyme offered me a safe passage. And the process of pouring my stories into this creative act transformed them to something beautiful, something that I wanted to embrace instead of hide, something that I even wanted to share. Over the next years, I took what I was learning to my students, and I experimented with making this accessible, even to those who didn't think they had a creative bone in their body. And I somehow also inherently understood that there was both an individual and collective healing process possible here, that even those who had no musical experience could create something together that made them feel better. Fast forward to the summer of 2018. My husband, Pete Calvert, and I were asked to work with students of Marjory Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, shortly after the horrific mass shooting at their school. And when we arrived, the kids were like ghosts. They were silent and shell-shocked, clearly still living in the trauma of that day. So with the support of a licensed music therapist, we began to facilitate this collaborative songwriting process, starting out with icebreaker games, musical activities, hand drumming, and a lyrical brainstorming process to begin to draw out the common threads of their experiences. And what we witnessed in four short days was nothing short of miraculous. The kids began to show more ease and more fluidity. They began to connect and trust each other with their feelings. And they even began to find their own comfort zone within the emerging structure of this song. One student creating a drumbeat that expressed his terror in that moment. Another singing a melody that conveyed her rage at what had happened. And yet another writing a lyric that poured out his profound sense of loss. And the alchemy of this process weaved all the individual threads of their experiences together into a powerful, collaborative work of art, transforming them from the ghosts we met on day one to exuberant, vibrant souls who could hardly wait to share what they had created with others. 
So on the final day, when they were to present their song to the others in this Healing Through the Arts initiative, they literally grabbed each other by the hands, stood each other up, standing proudly, smiles beaming while their song was played. And in that moment, even just a tiny sliver of the horrors that they shared was transformed into something beautiful and something they could return to and listen to and share with others over and over again as a reminder of their strength and their courage and the fact that they are not alone. Take a listen to their song. I just want some release Some peace and quiet Once in a while is all I need No one understands What I'm going through But I just want to try That was a turning point for me, a confirmation. This stuff works. Even in the most dire circumstances, even in only four short days. So Pete and I set out to found our therapeutic arts nonprofit organization called Thread as a response to rising levels of trauma in our world. And rising, they are. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, trauma was a rising health crisis. But now the data shows an even greater increase in mental health challenges, with 42% of people surveyed by the US Census Bureau reporting increased symptoms of anxiety, depression. One in 10 reporting increased substance use, a sharp increase in suicidal ideation, and a growing number of the population reporting unmet mental health care needs, including disproportionate numbers of young people, people of color, essential workers, unpaid caregivers, and in fact, doctors and mental health care professionals are worried that the worst is yet to come as this pandemic eventually subsides and we're faced with the emotional and psychological aftermath of this crisis. We're in something here, we're struggling. And not only are we feeling the impact of this current global crisis, but for many of us, it's re-triggering old wounds and unearthing buried trauma and making daily life almost intolerable. Our trauma just won't stay silent any longer. The data shows it, the mental health care professionals know it, and above all, we're feeling it whether we acknowledge it or not. So what do we do? What can't we do? Traditional talk therapy is not for everyone. Support groups are not for everyone. And remember, most of us want nothing to do with trauma at all. So what if we could turn our trauma into something beautiful? What if the process of healing could be collaborative? What if it could be creative and fun and cathartic? And what if it could be shared with others, 
so that they too could feel better? What if creative expression could be a lifeline? In this break glass in case of emergency moment, could it be an innovative and accessible solution to all this trauma and isolation and disconnection that we're feeling? I think so. I know so. I've experienced it in my own journey over and over again. And I've witnessed it in the journeys of the hundreds and hundreds of people I've helped. I've always believed that creative expression could be a catalyst to change the world. One person at a time, from the inside out. I've got one end of this lifeline, and I've got you, if you want to grab hold. Thank you.